Hello, welcome back to DevOps 2013. Uh, we're here right after the Google keynote with uh, Lars and Casper. Hey. And uh, welcome, guys, and congratulations. You've just announced uh, Dart 1.0. Sure uh, did. Fantastic news. Yeah, I know. You've been working hard on it, I'm pretty sure. And you spent the last two and a half years working on Dart. So finally it's out, and it seems like it's well received. So fantastic new platform for writing web applications. Right, so uh, give me the, 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 the big, big picture on in terms of what it's trying to do, the fact that it's not just a language probably, like the elevator pitch. The elevator pitch? Yes, ah, it's gonna okay. be short. First floor. We only want one Moving thing. Up. The only thing we want is to make it programmers more efficient when, when they write web applications. And today there's, there's currently some obstacles. We think the language is not structured enough for writing big applications. Uh, lacking of tools, and we're trying to solve that with Dart. Okay. And so Dart is a combination of a programming language, a uh, rich set of consistent libraries, an IDE, and then we have the, uh, the final piece, we have uh, Chromium with Dart VM support. So that means that when you do development, if you change your code, you can try it right away. So I think no lag in tools when, when using it. I think it's worth adding that, uh, in addition to having that, that native way of running Dart code, you can also compile Dart to, to JavaScript and run it across today's course, browsers. Which would be probably, so you're, you're talking about the developer use case, which is as fast as possible of a round trip, so you Definitely. get immediate feedback on your changes, and you're more addressing the deployment story, which today, probably will be more about generating JavaScript, but it's a, it's a valid point you need to deploy your application. And, yeah. and by no means, we, are, we, we don't want to, to fragment the web. So it's important that when you translate that, uh, that code into JavaScript, it'll work on all the modern browsers. So let's drill down just a little bit on this. How, how good of a job are you actually doing generating the, the JavaScript? You know, how, how big, how efficient is the code that's being generated. So the generated code is, is, uh, is, is getting very, very good. Uh, so um, we measure performance of the generated code and the size of the code, track it over time, and we made lots of good improvements there to a point where uh, generated JavaScript code um, emitted from the Dart to JS compiler is as efficient as handwritten code for a lot of cases. And like I probably should have mentioned that you guys are performance guys. You know, you've been working on sort Hotspot, of, yeah. on V8, and the goal every time was really to enable new class of applications because the speed was so much faster. So Performance is good. People so tend to like it. It's easy that way. Perfect. One thing I should add about performance is that if you, if you increase performance in a platform, you enable new classes of applications to run on a platform. And that certainly ha ha happened on the web where over the last five years, uh, performance of the browser has just went through the roof. Right. And suddenly you see very complex and very uh, animated applications running on the web, and it's just due to performance. When you give performance to programmers, they'll use it. Especially yeah. if you give them like a hundred times performance improvement, that really changes the game, right? Things that you couldn't build before are uh, uh, suddenly possible to, to build. Right. So this is 1.0 and you guys are talking performance already? Why not? No, Why great, not? I think it's a great feature. Uh, performance is always a great feature. It, Tends to be a 1.1 or 2.0 feature. Did In this case, it's not. Right. I mean, but you I think Casper forgot to mention the Dart VM we have. We also have a VM for Dart. Yes. It's running twice as fast as uh, as JavaScript. As JavaScript. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's not too bad. It's a good starting point, and we s uh, we expect that over the next uh, year or two to dramatically increase the speed, both on the translated code to JavaScript. Sure but also on the native implementation. Yeah. So the end result is web applications, but not only you can go, we'll, we'll probably talk about where else you can use Dart, but who is this really targeted at? Is it, what kind of developers? Is it JavaScript developers today, web developers, maybe server side, trying to get into? Uh, there's a lot of end? interest from people that actually have a background in, in uh, Java, C Sharp, that, that they want to try to find a good way of using their skills. On, on the web for building web apps. Uh, we certainly see a lot of people interested there. So w what's worth mentioning probably is the optional typing. Optional typing I is interesting in that you can, uh, you can start out doing prototyping without being bothered by the types. Right. When you then get uh, your structure into your program, you can start adding uh, static types in your uh, APIs. So at least other, other teams that use your code can see how it should be used. Yeah, docu so, uh, documenting the intent of, of your code so makes a ton of sense absolutely. when you work and with it also people. And it also makes it more, much more readable. So given that you're serious about doing web applications, your application will survive for a long time and you need to maintain it and refactor it. And the more intent you have specified in the program, the easier it is to maintain over time. I guess a simple uh, 
description of that, that is that we found that people that use uh, Dart for writing web apps have an easier time actually taking a sample and understanding what it does and finding relevant documentation from the type annotations than people that start from JavaScript. Because you don't have the types in there to tell you what to look for in the documentation. So it's really helpful. Yeah. Um, so other than types, you it has everything you would expect from a modern language. So packages built in, lambdas, yep. all of those things. You want to talk about maybe syntax sugar? You've, you've mentioned a, a, you've done a demo a, a during the keynote. Sure. Want? I mean, so we, we try not to add like, too much syntax syn syn uh, sugar, uh, but sometimes you just want to express your uh, your code in a concise, nice way without repeating yourself over and over again. So um, we've added a few things that make it easier to construct objects in a, in a simple and sane way without repeating the, the field names and the parameter names all over the place like it's common in some other languages. Um, so we've, we've done a lot of things to just like, cut down on the boilerplate. So it's, we like to call it like, a ceremony-free language. You don't have to um, write tons of code just to get your, uh, your stuff up and running. And the feedback from the products that are using Dart so far has been that it's more compact than Java and it's very, very, very readable. So so far, it looks good. It seems like we've hit the sweet spot uh, for what people is expecting. What's, what's quite quite impressive, I think, is that you guys have pretty much started building a real community around it. So, because you have package management, mm -hmm. you have people contributing those uh, libraries in form of packages. You have people using it, early adopters. So, tell me more about the community and how it's been used, and 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 maybe what's what's Google's interest in in, in all this, and is Google even using Dart or planning to use it? Of course, they're using Dart. <laughs> So we are not do. Uh, this is not a toy project. We are doing right. it for real, and we are serious about making it a, a good platform for writing uh, scale, uh, scalable web applications. One thing you have to bear in mind: before we had Dart, uh, you would find uh, big uh, web uh, uh, projects that are using JavaScript plus comments, where the types were put in comments, and you would, based on these comments, try to figure out how the program was uh, mm -hmm. uh, stitched together. And uh, we're just taking the extra step in making a language that supports that. So for, ap for applications that are large and uh, where you have several teams working on the same code base, this is a, a huge step forward. And of course, uh, you know that Google is having a lot of big web apps. And yep. uh, we are serious about making sure that we can maintain these web apps over time. So yes, you will in the future see applications written in Dart from Google. So as well as from the outside, which is important too. So there's at least one that's uh, public, uh, publicly uh, talked about, and, uh, and Brad Green from the Angular team was uh, was up on stage talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. how they built an application with was it a, a, a team of 10, 12 developers in less than six months, and none of them actually knew uh, neither Angular nor uh, nor Dart. So, th so this is uh, the the interesting part. Uh, we have been very conservative in designing the programming language so that. Uh, if you had a background in a uh, program language like uh, C Sharp or, or Java, um, you could easily transition into using Dart without having any surprises. So our, our one of, uh, one of our, our core goals when designing the program language is there's no surprises when using it. We would like to have each construct in the language be so natural to understand as possible, so no magi magic was happening to the program. I think that that is key to make sure that people like the programming language. Yeah. Like returning to your point about packages and, and, and community around Dart, uh, it was very nice for us to be able to give a keynote and like the demo that we wanted to show in there was actually based on like third party, you could say, like community code built by someone outside our team just using the Dart platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's an excellent uh, set of libraries we have out there that way. So Angular is very popular. Tell me more about the work you've done with the Angular team. So the Angular guys um, decided to make a Dart version of Angular, and that's a great way to write apps, a framework for writing web apps. And but then you all the logic in the program you just specify in Dart. Mm. So um, and then what kind of benefit do they expect from that? And are, are they getting it already? Well, they're getting some of the same benefits as everybody else who's writing in Dart, right? More structure to your code. Uh, okay. It's easier to document your intent. Mm -hmm. like everything's sort of built for writing larger, maintainable apps. Mm -hmm. uh, and you certainly get that uh, even in a, in a, in a setting where, where you're using Angular, Angular Dart. Uh, so there's really no difference between Dart and Angular Dart in that, in that space. Mm -hmm. Angular solves the problem of uh, data binding and those things yes, in the that. Angular way, you could say. And then Dart takes care of, of making sure you do application can scale up uh, in the in the basic constructs that it provides. So if you if you like the nice uh, bindings uh, they provide in Angular, 
and uh, then you can use Angular Dart together with all the logic written in Dart, and it works just great. Mm. So, yeah, great. Um, so you can use Dart to build to build web apps. Can you use it for command line, server side? Does it even make sense? It's a general purpose language, so you should be able it's, to do that. It's a general, general purpose programming language, and we already already have applications that are written outside the browser. Yeah. Yeah, the well, one, once, once you mentioned the Dart, uh, Dart to JS uh, command line tool, it's, it's a compiler that takes Dart code and produces JavaScript. Of course, it's written in Dart, and, and of course, it can compile itself. Of course. <laughs> oh yeah, so you can compile the Dart to JS compiler from Dart to JS and run on top of a JavaScript engine. Great. So if you like that, <laughs> yeah. if you're interested, in that sort of thing. Awesome. But that's probably be beyond the point. But this is one example where we c we have scaled uh, uh, sort of Dart to run outside the browser. Mm -hmm. So um, that works really well. Another one is that we have a uh, performance tracking s uh, server system inside uh, to track um, our increase in performance. So that's it's server side. It's all written in Dart, yeah. and uh, that's been running uh, stable for one and a half years now. So. It even works outside the browser. It does. Very nice. And there's more to come here. But I think it's important to focus on web applications. Now, this is the first uh, area where we are trying to uh, have consistent libraries and so forth. Yes. And uh, when that all works well, we uh, will be happy to yeah. expand let's, let's outside. Let's focus on that. Let's do that really well. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys have had a lot of experience in, in virtual machines, Hotspot, V8. What were the challenges with Dart VM specifically? Uh, it's sort of designed to be less challenging, you can say, than many of the other things. Like we know like, from ground up how VMs work, so that helps when you design the language that you're trying to avoid some of the pitfalls that make it really hard to implement. To so we're trying to make a design that allows us to make it go really, really fast. To, so you to, could to say to that honest, it's been... we designed it to make it easier for the VM implementer. So, okay. so one thing that uh, we, we have been bothered by in other systems is that it's very hard to predict uh, performance of an application. So the Dart programming language has been designed so that we can predict how well it performs on the VM. So the programmer, when writing a program, he sort of have a, uh, uh, he can sort of estimate how fast it runs, and this is great. So it's basically uh, all about avoiding like performance pitfalls. pitfalls. Yeah. Like if you if you fall off that performance cliff uh, in too many weird ways, it makes it really hard to reason about yeah. the performance of your code. So for instance, uh, to give a contrast to make it more concrete, in JavaScript, right? You know, you can use an object as a uh, as a dictionary, basically. Right. And if you, from the side, get hold of an object inside an application and start messing with it, suddenly the whole application runs slow. Yep. And that cannot happen in, the, in Dart. So we designed it in such a way that's not possible. And I think that that will be great for developers because they, they, can, they can predict how well the code runs and should not try to sort of uh, guess whether it runs fast in one pl on one platform or the other. So this is good. So performance, by the way, is not just the app running fast, it's also about the, the app starting fast, you know, in the web that actually makes a lot of sense. So uh, there's work, I understand, or around that in the Dart VM in terms of fast startup. Do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, we, we have snapshots. Snapshots. So snapshots are, is a simple mechanism where you basically start up the program until you're about to execute main. And at that point, you take uh, the whole heap and serialize it and put it into a binary format on the file system. And you can use that as a starting point when you start the application. And it's sort of you get a factor of 10 spot of startup uh, in startup performance. Right. That means that if your application would take sort of a second to start up, now it's only 100 milliseconds. Right. And uh, as soon as the, the, the Dart VM uh, appears in Chrome, yeah. Uh, then we will. Uh, then you will hopefully see a very snappy startup of web applications. Already mm -hmm. now, we're using these snapshots when starting up Dart to JS to make sure you, the tools are have a fast startup in our uh, toolbox. Yeah. Great. So when can we? Um, are you starting to talk to the Chrome guys to, to get it in? Of course, you have uh, a Chromium built with the Dart VM, which is what you mentioned for the development cycle. Yeah. Uh, Next step is obviously to make it available as many to many people as possible, and people just realize that the app is running faster, right? Precisely. There's you no. There's you no can think about the Dart VM inside the browser as an accelerator. Right. So it's not there. You'll take pick up the JavaScript version. Talking to the, uh, the Chrome guys, we are the Chrome guys. We are working in the Chrome team. So of course. Uh, well, I'm uh, sure you need to do uh, some convincing before it happens. The technology speaks for itself. It does. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Right. Well, uh, on that note, congratulations again Thank on you. that Wonder release. Uh, where should people go to try it out? Startlang.org. Try it out. Send us the feedback. Mm -hmm. There so you go. It's for, y for you guys. So hopefully you like it and send us feedback so we can improve our system. That's it? Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you.